Check one, check two. Oh, yes, the microphone is off and we are back. You want to know, friends? We are back for season eight and my friends, it's going to be great. Welcome to another episode of We're Going There. I am your host, Bianca Wattis Oltoff, and I'm so excited to be back. Listen, I'm all about a good Sabbath. I'm all about a good break, but this was definitely a break longer than I had expected. I will get into it in a second as to why there was a break, because don't worry, the break was utilitarian in nature, as in like there was stuff that was being done and stuff that I was dreaming about, but it is a new season. And I'll be honest with you. I'm going to, I'm, I'm just going to confess right now. Usually for all season openers, if you go back and look at the last seven seasons for the season opener, I really want like, like a killer interview, a killer guest. Like it's going to be amazing. I want to open with a bang and friends. We've had some stellar people confirm for this season. I'm so excited about what's coming up, but it was like running into walls to figure out how we were going to start season eight. And then after thinking and trying to be creative and, and, and thinking outside the box, I realized, you know, I don't think that having a guest is working out for season opener because I just want to talk to my people. One of the things that I realized about the podcast is that those that listen to the podcast have become dear friends. In fact, a couple events that I have done lately, people have said like, oh, I listened to your podcast. I discovered you through the podcast. I like the podcast. And I just want to say, I really love that we get to have another touch point, another resource that we get to connect on here and share stories, stories of transformation, stories of hope, not just with other people, but even with podcast listeners. In the last couple seasons, it has been so fun to see that we've had guests, we've We've had some family members. I've had some friends. We've even had some podcast listeners show up on the podcast. And if you were part of our dating boot camp, I think the tally, I think it's six. Six relationships that have budded out of the dating boot camp. Now, I'm not talking about six people that like went on dates. I'm talking about six people that are like booed up. I, tell me, tell me my God won't do it. See, see, this is an added bonus for listening to We're Going There you might just find a spouse. Hello. Okay. Listen, it's season eight and I don't want to geek out over biblical numerology, but you know, as a Christian, as a word nerd, I have to tell you that the number eight in biblical numerology means get ready. Brrr, new beginnings. Yep. And I'll be honest with you in these here parts, it feels like there are some new things brewing. I can't see it. I don't get it. I can't explain it but I feel it. I feel it. So we're not starting with a guest or we're starting with a big bang. We're starting with me. And I'm so excited that this season we're having a new format as well. So every season we've taken different guests and we've had different topics and we've explored different things either in five day series or a guest will come in and talk about something that they're an expert in or something they're passionate on, or maybe even a book that they wrote. This season's a little bit different. I wanted to give an overarching theme, an overarching theme. And every week we unpack it from a different angle. And yes, there'll be guests and there'll be solo episodes and there'll be some Q and A's and some hot seats. But what I want to do is take one topic and hit it from so many different angles that we actually have practical handles on what to do afterwards. So before I tell you what the theme for the season is, let me unpack it with this. In November of last year, uh, some people from church, some of the executive leaders from church got together. And what we do is we pray and we seek God and we ask God for wisdom, vision, and insight for the following year. And then after a day, uh, two days of us being together and praying, fasting, uh, asking God for the next steps, we usually walk away with a theme, an intention, or a word. Sometimes it's a phrase. Sometimes it's just one word. But this year, this year, it was almost like this bubbling up where all of us came together and it was almost like puzzle pieces coming together and realizing that our word for this season for the church was resilient faith, resilient faith. Now, this was funny to me and I thought like, okay, and, and to be honest with you, in this entire process, I was a little bit more timid and quiet than usual because I clearly had been working on a project and I was writing a book at the time and the book was on grit and resilience. Now, what I didn't know was that I wasn't writing the book for anyone else other than me. And that's what we're talking about today. Sometimes we don't know why we're doing what we're doing or why we are where we are at, but it's in those moments where we feel like, I wanna give up. I'm not sure this is for me. Am I really cut out for this? 
I don't think I have the strength to continue on. Yeah, it's in those moments where we pause and say, God, I need you to confirm what you've spoken to me. I need you to show me that the path that I'm walking on is the right path. I need you to be here for me. So that's what I want to unpack. Not just in this episode, but in the season. What does it look like to be resilient? What does it look like to, in my words, be a gritty gangster? Where come what may, you're not going to quit. And so this season, we have some amazing guest speakers. I mean, people that are experts in the field, people that are going to talk about loss and trauma, people that are actually therapists that are going to unpack what does this look like from a psychological perspective. We've got storytellers, we've got writers, we've got a pastor. I mean, I'm very excited about how this season is shaping up and I hope you are too. But what I want to do is give you a little sneak peek. The podcast family has become people that I really enjoy sharing my time with. I mean, the truth of the matter is, You're listening to this and I have access to your ears. I know, TMI, weird. But if you're listening to me right now on this podcast, we're having the most intimate conversation and exchange that we possibly can because most likely you're listening alone. So, hi, my name is Bianca and I make things awkward. But in addition to that, I kind of want to have an honest conversation. So let's start here. In a season of new beginnings, I want to be fully transparent about some of the areas in my life that I love to keep hidden. This season, we're going to be exploring a bunch of different topics, but I think like we need to start here. We need to start with the truth of the reason why God nudged me to write on grit. The reason why we landed on resilient faith as being our word is because the Lord was preparing me. See, I thought I wrote a book on grit and resilience and perseverance and endurance because in my ignorance or arrogance, I don't know, verdict still out, is that I kind of thought like, well, yeah, I've lived through some stuff. I definitely can provide some practical handles to help people. What I didn't know is that I was writing a manual for my future. In fact, I submitted the manuscript for this book, Good Grief, literally a year ago. By the time this podcast comes out, the, the manuscript was done almost a year ago. But in the course of the year, through editing, through praying, and through living, I've realized that the words on that page literally have helped me get through one of the most trying seasons of my life. So yes, I have a book coming out. Yes, I'd love for you to get it. Yes, I'd love for you to leave a positive Amazon review too. But today I'm not going to bring you content from the book. In fact, if I'm honest with you, I'm talking to you in my microphone, in my bedroom with no notes. And if you know me, that feels terrifying. I love having a plan. I love having a strategy. I love color coding my notes. I like when things make sense. I like when everything is neat and tidy and clean and perfect. But as we start in season eight, a season of new beginnings, I feel like I just need to come as me. Now, me is also a preacher. So the things that I want to talk about, they all start with the same letter. (laughs) I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed because no matter how like, like just show up and be me, I want to be, I still have to make it make sense because here's the thing. You're giving me your time and I don't want to waste your time. As we talk about grit, as we talk about resilience, as we talk about new beginnings, I'm not bringing you something um, from a sermon that I've given before or from the book that I've written. I want to talk about now. I want to talk about my life. I want to talk about your life and what to do when we feel like we want to give up. If you are listening, I just want to spend a couple minutes talking, like real talk with you. You're not going to like what I'm going to say. In fact, it feels weird because I'm staring at a black screen on my laptop and I feel like I'm talking to me. I'm reminding me in this season that my life is a choice. I have agency. Some theologians might call that free will. I believe that the Lord loves us so much that he gives us the ability to choose. And because I have the ability to choose, I'm choosing to remain faithful. I'm choosing to stay in the hard. I'm choosing to love when it hurts. I'm choosing to forgive when I'm angry. I'm choosing to show up at church when I would rather sleep in. I'm choosing. See, when we want to give up and we want to quit, we have to remind ourselves, no, 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 no. I have a choice and I am choosing not what's easy. I'm choosing what is right. And for me in this season, I've made a conscious decision and a conscious choice that I am choosing joy. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not. 
And I know there's somebody out there that's really dealing with a lot of pain. And by the fact that I'm saying, oh, choose joy, you like want to throw your phone or turn off the podcast or think to yourself, you have no clue what I'm going through, Bianca. And the truth of the matter is, is I don't, I don't know what you're going through. But if you're anything like me, choosing joy feels like a profane word, maybe like a cuss word. But I'm telling you, there's a benefit. When we make a conscious decision, I am not a victim. I may have been victimized, but I'm not a victim. You get to say, I'm not just a survivor. No, no, no. I'm an overcomer. And I think that when we frame our language, it, it puts the power back in our hands and the power back in our voice. And, it, and, and to clarify, it's not our power that we've earned on our own. I'm going to dare to say that it is power that the Spirit of God has given us to do exactly what I said we need to do when we want to give up. Then that's make the choice. The power that I get up with every single morning, I'm going to be straight up with you. It is not my own. This power is not my own. I make a choice and I make a decision to choose joy. And if you're thinking, well, gosh, you know, okay, fine. I'm going to choose joy. I'm going to get a tattoo that says joy. I'm going to tell myself to choose joy, but joy isn't coming. Let me give you what the psalmist says as a tip. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. You have a choice. You have a choice to be in the presence of the Lord. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, though life might feel like a dumpster bin fire right now, guess what? You can get into the presence of the Lord. And nothing in your life will change except your perspective and your posture. So what do I do when I want to give up? I make the choice. I make the choice not to give up, not to throw in the towel, not to quit, not to lie on the floor and writhe in pain and punch the air. Now, I, I'm not going to say I haven't done that, but I'm saying I'm choosing not to. Choice. You have a choice. One of the things that I am also holding on to in this season that I want you to hold on to when you want to give up is to remember this simple fact. You are called. Golly, I know. I know it sounds like a preach. Come on, Bianca. Really, that's what you're going to give us? Yes, Bianca, that's what I'm giving you. Don't forget that you're called. In moments where you feel overwhelmed, in moments when you feel like you're not going to make it, in moments where you feel like you are not enough, when in moments when you feel like you're inept, when moments when you feel like you don't have the answers or you don't know your next step, know that you're called. That God promises us that there is a future for us. And he has plans for us, plans of good and not of evil. And we are told that he's a good shepherd, that he cares for us. So even in the valley of the shadow of death, like Psalms 23 says, no, mm -mm. he's with me. So I'm remembering that I'm called. And though God has called me, I also rest in the assurance that it's not me that has to equip me. God has called me and he's given his Holy Spirit to equip me. So whether I am at work or whether I'm doing this podcast with no notes and feeling very scared that I just have five points all with the same letter on a post-it note for this podcast, this is what I'm holding on to. I'm called. God has called me to this season. God has called me to lead. God has called me to write. God has called me to a podcast. God has called me to be a friend. God has called me not to give up. What are you called to? When was the last time someone looked at you across the table and said, what are you called to? I'm talking to you right now, straight up. You've got to know what you're called to because if you don't articulate it, and I'm not just going to say if you don't think about it. No, no, no. If you don't articulate it, if you don't write it down, if you don't crochet it on a pillow or write it in a journal, if you don't have it listed, then you will walk away with a missed opportunity. You've got to identify what am I called to? Now, I know this feels very, very nebulous and overwhelming, like, oh, calling, calling, calling is this big thing. Listen, What's around you in this season? That's what you're called to. For me, it's the church. I'm called to the church. For me, it's my family. I'm called to my family. For me, it's this podcast. I'll be honest with you. We had a hard assessment and a hard look at the podcast. Is this efficacious? Is this worth my time? Is, are people listening? Are lives being changed? But I realized I'm called to bring the gospel and gospel-adjacent conversations to those who are saved and unsaved. 
I continue to go with the podcast. I continue to pour into the podcast because I'm called. I'm not called to the podcast. I'm called to create resources that will draw people close to the cross. So when I want to give up, I remember what I'm called to. Yes, when you want to give up, you have to make a choice. And the choice isn't always easy, but you have to make the choice. Then you got to remember that you're called. And then I wish I would have put these in the book. I'm not even kidding. I wish I would have put these in the new book, Great Don't Quit, because they're good. The third thing that I would say to hold on to when you want to give up is care. Care for yourself. I did. I actually did a podcast on Sabbath. It was a bonus episode and it ne never made it to the podcast because I don't think it was for everyone yet. I think that what I've learned and what I've processed and what I've experienced was for no one else but for me in that season. But I've been trying very intentionally to maintain a Sabbath weekly and then um, probably like once every two months take a little bit more than a day, like a day and a night to get away and literally turn off my phone, turn off Basecamp, turn off Asana, turn off the internet, turn off social media so that I can care for myself. So in a season that's been really hard, I realized that I've been going and going and going and I love it. I'm, I'm just like a high strung person. I also, I wouldn't say that I'm high capacity. I feel like there's a high calling and because there's a high calling, the Lord gifts me to accomplish a lot of things. But like, for example, Right now, it's uh, 9.30 at night, and I promised producer Madi that I would finish this episode that I've been putting off because, quite honestly, I'm afraid. And, and I love going. I love doing. I love it. I love it. I love leading the church. I love writing. I love it. It's fun, and, and it gives me fuel. But I think also the danger is that what is fuel can also be the thing that you hide behind. And so I've been going so hard that I think I... I felt myself kind of losing touch with, with what I was feeling and my emotions. And, uh, in July, I took a Sabbath, like a proper Sabbath. Like I told the church staff and I told the, in the name of love team, Hey, I'm turning off my email and you can't, you, you can't speak to me for seven days. And I was so proud of myself because I turned off my phone too. And I only turned on my phone once. And that was just to text my loved ones and be like, hello, I'm live. And then the phone went off again. Uh, but in that Sabbath, I realized I realized I've been ignoring a lot of my feelings and a lot of the truth of what I have been going through in the last couple of years. And so when you feel like you want to quit, it's going to be easy to numb out. When you feel like you want to quit, it's going to be easy to hide behind your successes. When you want to quit, it's going to be easy to hide behind your responsibilities. Oh, I can't take care of myself. I can't take a break because, you know, I'm very important. I've got stuff to do. I'm going to push you. I'm going to push you so hard. Because I had such a watershed moment with God and allowing myself, and it didn't happen on day one, it didn't happen on day two, it didn't happen on day three. In fact, on day one, I read a novel. I read an entire novel. Oh, it was so indulgent. Oh my gosh, I sat on a pool chair and I just read a novel. Yes, a novel. I played tennis. I played tennis twice a day. It was the oddest thing. I had like, I allowed myself, I allowed myself to have fun. I allowed myself to be reckless and not work. It was bananas. So by day three, I paused and I started to feel again. And I started to feel a lot of the sadness that I have maybe stuffed down or not wanting to deal with. But when you feel like you want to quit, one of the best things that you can do is care for your soul. I had finished both of the novels that I brought with me. And of course, I had my Bible and my journal. At the expense of sounding hyper spiritual, like I did spend a lot more time reading my Bible and journaling while I was there. And I really felt like David on the backside of the desert, like lamenting. I just started journaling everything, all like my hopes and dreams, those that have been actualized, those that have not been actualized. And in that process, I found that I was caring for my soul. And sometimes we think that crying isn't caring, that crying is just emotional. Crying is what babies do. No, crying is caring. And it felt like it was this release of like everything that I have been holding on to and holding faith for and holding space for, I no longer had to carry. For a moment, I was able just to put all of that down. And I was going to say, put it in the hands of the Lord. No, it's in his hands anyways. Like it literally, he's in control of it. He's in control of it. But just put it down. I think I have been holding space and faith for 
for a breakthrough and believing God for big things. But being alone and being away and caring for my soul, let me know that the burden is not mine to carry. In fact, for the podcast listeners, every year I do a word for the year episode and walk people through how to discover their word for the year. It's one of my favorite episodes and I literally do it every single year, but it just gets better and better because I edit it every single year. Well, my word for the year was ease. And I had shared on the podcast that there was actually two words that kind of emerged. I got this image of an ox, like an oxen, a big oxen, big, strong shoulders. And the words, the two words that I got were yoked and easy. Like a yoke, not like an egg yoke, but a yoke that goes around the neck of a beast of burden. And I felt like the Lord was just like giving me insight to what my next year was going to carry. I was processing this with my twin sister, Jasmine, and Jasmine's like, B, I love that you got both of those words, but as you take a look at this next year, like what word do you want to hold on to? Because yoked feels very heavy, but ease feels like, like God's in control is going to take care of it. And I realized, yeah, you know what? That's true. Then the Lord led me to a passage in Matthew where Jesus says, come to me all who are heavy laden and I will give you rest for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God was giving me a hint that this year was going to be so incredibly heavy, but I can come to him because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. When you feel like you want to quit, remember you have a choice. Oh, you can't. You can. You know what quitting feels like, but do you know what staying feels like? Do you know what commitment feels like? Do you know what choosing the, the right over the easy feels like? Not only is it a choice, you can push off the, the feeling of quitting by remembering what, what you're called to and remembering that you're called. And then caring, caring for your soul, caring for yourself, not putting that to the side, not thinking it's indulgent because self-care isn't selfish. Yes, someone needs to write that down. Self-care isn't selfish. For the moms out there or for the busy entrepreneurs, the CEOs, self-care is not selfish. It helps you remember your why. Why are you doing what you're doing? When you feel like you want to quit, maybe you just need a break. Here's, here's what you're going to hear me say. Maybe you need a nap, friend. Maybe, maybe you turn off the podcast right now and, and take a nap. Maybe you just need to care for your soul. And lastly, this is the one where I just feel so committed to share is when you feel like you want to quit, when you feel like you are just at the end of the rope, when you feel like you're on your hands and knees and you are deep breathing, trying to catch your breath, I'm going to ask you to crawl. I'm going to ask you to crawl. Uh, two weeks ago, I was at the gym and I like this one Saturday morning class. It's at 6.20 a.m in Orange County, California. And what would possess me to work out at six o'clock in the morning on a Saturday on the day that I could actually rest? It's because I love it. I love it. And in Grit Don't Quit, one of the ways that you ward off anxiety and depression is that you actually work out. We get to pave new neural pathways in our brain and create oxygen in our brain when we work out. So it's just working out is a daily discipline for me. And I remember I'd gotten some bad news uh, so much so that I just, it almost felt like the wind was knocked out of me. And I showed up to, I showed up to the gym and I was so grateful because there was a couple girls from church there. And though it's not our small group or our community group, we kind of jokingly say that it is, it's our grit, don't quit workout group. And, uh, and we were all lined up ready to do our exercises and how uh, our group exercises worked is that I was partnered up with somebody I didn't know. And, um, everyone was ready. And we were pushing those metal sleds. If you're not familiar with it, it's like, a, a, it literally looks like a sled. And on top of it, you can put plates of weight. Now, everyone had different weights on theirs. And I'm looking at the people next to me and like, listen, I ain't trying to judge or whatever, but it was more like an assessment. Like, dang, it looks like there's a lot of weight on this sled. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'm doing my math correct. There was 60 pounds on our sled and there was like 45 pounds on the sled next to me. And then there was 25 pounds on the sled next to them. And I'm looking down the line. I was like, oh, this is for the hefty honeys or something. Cause they put a lot of weight here. Well, I began to push the sled and then my partner pushed the sled back. And as I was turning around the sled and getting ready, she comes over, not with one plate, but with two, 
She t- we had the heaviest sled, and then she slammed on two more weighted plates. I looked at her, and listen, I'm saved and sanctified saint, but it is 6.30 in the morning. I'm tired. I had a bad day, and now she's trying to, like, break my back. Like, what? Sis, don't you know what was going on in my life? Sis, don't you know that what's on my shoulders feels so heavy? Sis, don't you know that my word is yoked? I like, got a yoke of burden on me? Like, what you doing? She looked at me, and she said, I looked at you, and I said, oh, yeah, she's strong. She can handle it. And she thrust the plates on the sled. I, friends, I have to pause for a second because I've never heard the voice of God audibly. I want to have like a Moses and a burning bush moment. I really do. But he's never spoken to me in an audible way. But hand to heaven, this woman that I didn't know, who I've never met, looked at me in my face and said, I looked at you and I know that you're strong. I knew that you could handle it. As I pushed the sled down the turf mat at this gym, I was choking back in tears and swallowing a lump in my throat because it was as if God himself spoke to me and said, (laughs) I looked at you and I know that you are strong. I knew you could handle it. In those moments when you feel like you have all the weight of the world on your shoulders and you think that you can't go on, what do you do? I'm telling you, you crawl. You're on your knees and you crawl. No matter how heavy it feels, someone has to know, someone needs to hear me say, you crawl. Because you are stronger than you think. And by the very nature of your ability to crawl means that you're making progress. Oh, sure. You would love to leap like a gazelle. You would love to sprint like you're an Olympic athlete. But sometimes the greatest act of resistance is to move forward despite what feels like a weight that is going to kill you. And I pushed that sled and I said, I don't care if I have to crawl to the finish line. I don't care how much weight is on these plates. I'm going to get past the finish line. You know the funny thing? I pushed it with ease. I was kind of embarrassed. Like I, I looked around. I kind of felt like one of those like big girl Shiras in the gym, you know, like, oh my gosh, why is this hefty honey trying to be like all yoked out and grunting? But like literally I pushed all of that weight. And I realized at the end of that exercise, I am stronger than I think. In fact, she ended up being my workout partner in all five rounds of this workout. And on the next exercise, she stacked the plates on a bent over row. And I was like, I looked at her. I said, yep, I think she looks stronger than she thinks. And I added more weight to our bent over row. I think that the point of this season is for me to look at you, resilient gritty gangster that you are and tell you, yeah, you look strong. In fact, you're stronger than you think. And I know you can do it. In this season, it is my absolute privilege and honor to remind you that you have a choice, that you are called. I want us to take care of ourselves, And no matter what, we're going to crawl. We're going to crawl past that finish line as an act of resistance against the enemy that wants to stop us and tell us that we're weak, that we cannot, that we will fail, that we will not survive, or we will not succeed. That's a lie from the pit of hell. And if you in this season feel like, no, Bianca, you don't understand. I'm down. I'm tired. God has given me a measure of faith that I don't care if I have to drag your big booty across that Weighted finish line. We're going to get across. My dad's a Marine and there's a mantra, leave no man behind. I'm changing that for the podcast and saying on this season, on this season of unpacking resilience, we're going to leave no podcast listener behind. That's right, friends. What an honor and a privilege it is to unpack this season of resilience with practical handles and tools so that your life is better, that you walk away more knowledgeable, and most importantly, you walk away with more faith. I'm privileged and honored that we get to journey this together. And as I've mentioned, I do have a new book coming out and I'm wildly excited. It's entitled Grit Don't Quit. And uh, much like the topics that we are unpacking and talking about today, it's going to give you practical handles on what to do when you feel like you've been knocked out, you're tired, 
maybe even feeling hopeless and a little lost, this is a book that provides resources to make sure that you don't quit. In addition to that, I have a bunch of giveaways that I'm doing on social media. You can follow me at Bianca Olthoff, but definitely you can pre-order the book on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Target.com. The title is Grit, Don't Quit. And when you pre-order the book, and this is only when you pre-order, you can submit that receipt and you get a bunch of freebies. Yes, video devotionals, a five-week study through the book of Luke called The Seat at the Table. Not only do I give you Bible studies and a written PDF guide for you to do your small group, I also give you recipes that I recorded with Chef Derek from Bee Sellers in Napa, California. Y'all, it's one of my favorite resources and it's free, nine to nine. Yes, pick it up. There's also a bunch of uh, free DFs. Those are free PDFs that I've created to help people walk through to build endurance, resilience, grit, and most importantly, a desire to never give up. What a privilege and an honor it is to be with you on this season. I'm so excited and I'd love to hear from you. Honestly, we really would. So excited and so grateful as the season starts. I have to give props to where props are due. Shout out to Megan Franks, a creative director at In the Name of Love, who has worked tirelessly on so many of the PDFs and the Bible curriculum that you guys are getting for free. Guess what? It is a labor of love. I I do not pay this woman enough to do everything that she does. So you can follow her um, at Meg Franks on social media. Her design brand is Brand and Brush. You can get more information on Meg, her designs, and her heart online. Shout out to Mari Nieves for always coming through and helping organize all the things. As director for In the Name of Love, I am so appreciative, not just of you, but for Angel too. Your angel, your husband Angel, is an angel to me. For Vanessa, I appreciate you. You have been a ride or die, so loyal, and I'm so grateful. Thank you for being part of the podcast. Thank you for being part of my life. And thank you for being the coordinator of chaos that keeps my calendar in order. Friends, I'm so grateful that you're here. I'm excited for a new season. I'm going to encourage you to subscribe so you don't miss any episode. And if the podcast has been a gift to you, it would be a gift to me if you left a positive review or shared these episodes with your loved ones. I'm so excited for what this season holds, and I can't wait to remind you that grit don't quit. Love you, family.